Welcome to today's stories. Today's stories about the horrors of staying at home alone. Story number one. The uninvited guest. I had always been one of those people who relished the solitude of being home alone at night. There was something about the quiet darkness that was oddly comforting. But little did I know that one fateful night would shatter that sense of security forever. It was a chilly autumn evening, and the rain pelted against the windows, creating a rhythmic melody that echoed through the house. My parents had left for a weekend getaway, leaving me alone in our creaky old house. They promised to be back by Sunday, and I didn't think much of it. I had my phone, Netflix, and a stack of snacks, so what could go wrong? As the hours ticked away, I decided to binge watch my favorite TV show to keep my mind off the storm outside. The living room was dimly lit by the flickering TV screen, casting eerie shadows on the walls. Occasionally, I heard the house settling, making its usual groans and creaks but I brushed it off as the normal sounds of an old house. Around midnight, the power went out, plunging the house into complete darkness. I fumbled for my phone and turned on its flashlight, grateful that it was fully charged. The rain outside had intensified, and the wind held like a chorus of lost souls. I felt a shiver crawl down my spine, with my phone as my only source of light, I made my way to the kitchen to find some candles. As I rummaged through the drawer, I heard a faint whisper, like a voice carried on the wind. I paused, my heart pounding, and listened closely. There it was again, a barely audible murmur. It sounded like someone calling my name. Who's there? I stammered, my voice trembling with fear. I scanned the room with my feeble flashlight but saw nothing out of the ordinary. Perhaps it was just my imagination playing tricks on me. I lit a few candles and returned to the living room, trying to shake off the unease that had settled over me. Just as I started to relax, I heard the whisper again, louder this time, closer. Sarah. My blood ran cold. Nobody should have known I was home alone, and that voice was distinctly familiar. It was my mother's voice. Panic clawed at my chest as I thought about the impossibility of my parents returning so soon. The voice called my name again, this time with an eerie urgency. I stumbled backward dropping the flashlight. The room plunged into darkness once more, but I couldn't bring myself to retrieve the light. The voice was closer now, so close that I could feel its icy breath on my neck. I dared not turn around. Sarah, why are you hiding? Tears welled up in my eyes as I clutched the candle, trembling with terror. My instinct screamed at me to run, but my legs felt like lead. The voice grew louder, an anguished wail that resonated through the house. I couldn't take it anymore. With every ounce of strength left in me, I bolted towards the front door. The rain battered against me as I stumbled outside, my heart pounding like a drum. I didn't stop until I reached my neighbor's house, where I pounded on the door, frantically explaining what had happened. The police arrived shortly after, and we returned to my house. But there was no sign of anyone. No intruder, no evidence of a break-in, nothing. My parents returned the next day, bewildered by my hysterics. They hadn't come back during the night, and they hadn't called my name. I moved out of that house, unable to forget the chilling experience. To this day, I can't explain what happened that night. 
but one thing is certain, I will never feel at ease when staying home alone at night again, for I know that sometimes, in the darkest of hours, something uninvited may come calling. Story number two. The Haunting Echoes Every time my parents left me home alone at night, I couldn't help but feel a sense of dread. It wasn't just the usual unease, it was the memory of that night. The night when I heard the whispers that should never have been there. I was sitting in the dimly lit living room, the TV casting eerie glows on the walls, when I heard the whispers return. It wasn't my name they called, it was something else entirely, something ancient and malevolent. The voice seemed to come from every corner of the room, as if the very walls were conspiring against me. I could feel a presence, a sinister force that wrapped around me like a cold, damp shroud. Paralyzed by fear, I strained to understand the words. They were in a language I couldn't recognize, guttural and filled with anguish. My heart raced as the whispers grew louder, their intensity increasing with each passing moment. The room felt as if it were closing in on me, the walls pressing in with a relentless force that threatened to crush my sanity. I dared not move, my eyes darting around the room, desperately searching for the source of this haunting torment. But there was nothing to see, just the darkness and the disembodied voices that clawed at my mind. My throat tightened, and I struggled to breathe, the air itself feeling heavy with malevolence. Suddenly, the temperature plummeted, and I could see my breath in the frigid air. The whispers coalesced into a chorus of anguished wails that seemed to emanate from the very depths of hell. I could feel unseen eyes upon me, watching, waiting, as if some malevolent entity had taken an interest in my despair. Summoning every ounce of courage I had left, I sprang to my feet and bolted towards the front door. The darkness outside was thick and suffocating, but it was preferable to the horrors that lurked within. I fumbled for my keys hands trembling as I struggled to unlock the door. Finally, it swung open, and I raced outside, gasping for breath as the rain soaked me to the bone. I stumbled to my neighbor's house, pounding on the door, tears mixing with the rain streaming down my face as I tried to explain what had happened. They called the police, who arrived shortly after. Together, we returned to my house, flashlights in hand, ready to confront whatever had terrorized me. But there was nothing. No whispers, no malevolent presence, nothing out of the ordinary. The police searched the entire house, finding no evidence of an intruder or any paranormal activity. My parents returned the next day, bewildered by my hysterics. They hadn't come back during the night, and they hadn't heard any whispers. I moved out of that house, unable to forget the chilling experience. To this day, I can't explain what happened that night. But one thing is certain, I will never feel at ease when staying home alone at night again, for I know that sometimes, in the darkest of hours, something uninvited may come calling and its haunting echoes will never truly fade. Story number three. The Phantom Footsteps. Being home alone at night used to be my idea of a perfect evening. But after what I experienced, I've learned to dread it. It was a quiet night, with only the faint sound of rain tapping on the windows. I was in the kitchen, making a late-night snack when I heard it, a series of slow, deliberate footsteps coming from the hallway. My heart pounded in my chest as I turned, expecting to see an intruder, but there was no one there. The footsteps were unmistakable, the sound of shoes on the hardwood floor growing louder with each step. 
I crept down the hallway, my footsteps echoing ominously in the silence. The footsteps continued, leading me to my parents' bedroom. The door was ajar, and I summoned the courage to push it open. Inside the room, the footsteps reached a crescendo, and I could see indentations forming on the carpet, as if someone were standing there, invisible to my eyes. The room was bitterly cold, and I could see my breath in the air. Fear constricted my throat as I called out, Who's there? Silence. I edged closer to the spectral footprints, reaching out a trembling hand to touch them. As soon as my fingers made contact, an ice-cold sensation shot through me, and I yanked my hand back in terror. That's when I noticed it, a strange, old-fashioned photograph on the dresser. It depicted a family that I didn't recognize, dressed in antiquated clothing, their faces obscured by shadows. The room seemed to grow darker as I stared at the photograph, and a feeling of dread washed over me. The footsteps, now softer, seemed to retreat toward the closet. I hesitated, then slowly approached, my heart pounding like a drum. When I opened the closet door, the footsteps abruptly stopped, leaving me in a suffocating silence. I gazed into the closet, expecting to see an intruder, but there was nothing there, just a collection of coats and shoes. I reached for the light switch, but the moment I flicked it on, the room plunged into darkness. The power had gone out, leaving me in the pitch black closet, the door swinging shut with a resounding click. Panic surged through me as I fumbled for my phone, its weak glow revealing the closet's contents. And there, amidst the coats and shoes, was something I hadn't seen before, a faded, old diary. I opened it, and the pages were filled with cryptic, handwritten notes in a language I couldn't understand. It felt as though I had stumbled upon a sinister secret. Just then, the closet door creaked open slowly, and a frigid breeze swept through the room. My breath caught in my throat as I turned to see a shadowy figure standing at the foot of the bed, its eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. It reached out a skeletal hand toward me, and I screamed, slamming the closet door shut and locking it from the inside. I stayed huddled in the closet, trembling with fear, as the presence outside grew stronger. The footsteps circled the room, and I could hear them getting closer, as though the entity was trying to find a way in. Hours passed, and I clung to the diary, praying for dawn to break. When morning finally came, I cautiously emerged from the closet, the room bathed in sunlight once more. The ominous presence was gone, and the photograph and diary had vanished. It was as if the room had returned to its normal state. I moved out of that house, forever haunted by the phantom footsteps and the chilling encounter in the darkened closet. Some secrets, it seemed, were best left undisturbed, and some footsteps should never be followed.